everybody, welcome back. Right now we're sitting in my 64 Ranchero. Uh, she's a project of her own, but I think this is where we're gonna start doing our intros and our outros. Uh, I just like the space and I love the old girl. So in today's video, we're actually starting to work on my dad's grill shack so we can get his Traeger smoker out of the garage so we can clean that space up and actually start working on projects in that space. Uh, it kind of goes the way I hope it does. In today's video, you'll see some of the, the things that don't go right. Uh, what I was planning to do was dig out a hole. I was planning to fill that hole with paper base, get it pretty much level, put the paved stones down, which will be our foundation, and level those out. Yeah, that doesn't... Yeah, you'll see. And then hopefully that gives us the foundation so we can actually start building out our 4x4s and building this grill shack. Well. Let's start digging and see how it goes. Alright, gonna dig out a ton of dirt. Ton of dirt, ton of dirt. But first we have to figure out how big do we want it to be. Spray paint, some stones, we'll figure it out. measurements and then I can actually start laying out where everything's gonna go so that I can start making my list of the materials that I need to actually build the shack. Let's draw a couple of lines here. So okay, so we start at the top here. We start at this guy. Bring it all the way down to five. Just to make it easier on me, so we're gonna start this is five feet, because that's what we got out there. And then we're just gonna do a line to the center of this guy. Our arrows, don't look great, that's okay. Just sketch up. Uh, six and one half feet. Okay, so we know the shack's gonna be pretty simple. So we're just going to mark out where our posts are gonna go. And then our posts is going to tell me how much length and feet I need. I don't even really have to do that. I'm just going to kind of mark things out so that I can see it in my brain. And then we'll start making a list just to listen things out loud and hopefully we'll get it done pretty quick. Now I'm just trying to figure out how much of things I need in each place. I know that I need four 4x4s. Four that's what everything's going to kind of attach to because that's what's going to go up to support the roof. I know I need three 2x4x8s on the base to attach those four together and kind of anchor everything to the ground. Those are going to be our seal plates. And now I need to figure out what else I need. I know I need at least three more 2x4x8s to be the top section of what will become the railing, which will also become kind of extra support to keep us square. And then I know that I need to have 
at least four two by six by eights to run the length between the two four by fours, which are going to be the seal plates for our joists that will run this way. So now what I'm trying to figure out in my head is I'm trying to figure out how much space do I want to put between each one of our ceiling joists in order to not have too much weight but also be able to support the corrugated roof. So now I'm just going to try and figure that math out. So we've got five feet, we divide that by four, it gives us a foot and a quarter between each one, so that gives us a foot and three inches between each board if we went four across it. If we went one, two, three, and four. Now if we did five, we could go a foot between each one, except it's not really a foot between each one because this little section here won't have anything, oh, no, it will have something over it because we'll extend off of the soffit a little bit. So we can go five across the top, which means I need eight more, two by fours by eights. Because those are going to be our ceiling joists because we're just doing a teeny tiny thing with a corrugated roof so it doesn't mean anything crazy. We know we want a two by six on each side of these beams because we're going to make it look pretty. So we need at least four, two by six by eights. And now we have to figure out what we need for our corrugation. So let's look up our corrugated roof. Because uh, I don't do it enough to know exactly what I need or how big stuff is. Uh, corrugated tin roof. Corrugated tin roof. All right, corrugated roof. They come in two and a half feet. We do a six inch overlay on these guys. You want to overlay it. You want to overlap them so that you don't have water leaking in between your corrugation. So really it's two feet. I believe these should be two feet by eight feet, which is gonna be okay because we're gonna make everything a little bit proud. Of this. So this thing is five feet long. So we're gonna make a All right, my dudes, welcome back. So a while ago, for you guys, it'll only be a short cut, but for me, it's been a couple of weeks. We dug out the hole for the base of the grill shack that we're going to build out here, because even though we've got a nice little cover right here, this can't live out here all the time, and it's not as aesthetically pleasing, and we want it to have a smaller footprint in the yard. So. What we're going to do is we're going to actually level our foundation today. So we've got to do some more tamping. We've got to do some more layout. And we've got to figure out what we're going to do in order to get everything nice and smooth and level so that we can start anchoring in our 4x4s and start building this grill shack. That's going to get the grill out of the garage so we can organize them there so we can actually get to working on projects. So I guess the next step is just start leveling out some pavers. All right, so before we start putting the paper base in here, the first big thing I need to do is I need to figure out how all these blocks need to come together in order to actually make the shape that I want. I might have to dig out a little bit more, but we're just gonna try and puzzle piece it together and figure out what I need to do in order to use all of the paved stones that I need to make the size that I want. Um, I know I had it figured out before, I just can't remember how I had it figured out. So we're gonna grab the measuring tape and start measuring stuff and piecing it together like a puzzle. Let's do it. Okay, okay. These are 18 inches. And my overall length is, it's like 60 is what I went with. Yeah, five feet, 60 inches. So if I put two of these guys in a row, I should be able to fill out the rest of this space with singles. So we have 18 on the edge of this. And that's this. So this guy over here. There we go. This guy right here. Okay. That should be 36 inches. It should be under one, two. One, two. Okay, so maybe that. I think this is, you know, for the back than it actually is. I don't want to do that anymore. Oh, yeah. Okay. So we gotta dig out a little bit more. That sucks. That should be okay. Six that should be six of them across. That should be five of them this way. Four this way. Five that way. Three. Two. Three. Four. Three. Four. That should be a little bit bigger. The joints. Five, then four, then four. This way. 
And if that one I should be able to fit no one in here. <sighs> Did I mess up? I think I messed up. Let's figure this out. But you guys probably saw me do this. If you saw me breaking up the clay, because we're in North Texas and it's all clay, it's not actually dirt. Breaking up the clay, that way I can uh, actually work on what I'm trying to do. So this place where we're building it is on a six inch grade, just about. I'll show you guys the shed foundation how much of a height difference there is but uh we have to level the dirt enough so that when i put the paver sand down that can be level and when the paver sand's level i can level out the pavers so that we have an almost level foundation almost perfectly level foundation um which the traeger needs in order to work we want to have a good foundation so that when we have water, we don't want it to run to the edge. We want it to run off the front and then out um, because it's corrugated. So we don't want it running off the edge. It's not where we want the water to go. So we have to make sure that this is level enough so that when I put the paver sand down, we can make it even more level. Now I'm just repeating myself for the sake of talking. I'm going to drink some water. Ah. Uh. All right, I guess I'll give you guys a close up of what this dirt looks like to get it almost level. You saw me out here with the big four foot level trying to get it close enough, and we are. We have a bit of a hump in the middle, but we can, we can work with that when we put the paver sand in and we put the pavers down, so. Oh, the smile of pain. All right, let's get to the next part. So, there you guys go. You see the big old edge there? There's the tamper. And as we move this way, there's almost like no edge. And as we get down to here, the edge is completely gone. That's what we want. That's how much of a difference there is from side to side. And now I have to dig out this front section right here. I gotta dig out this section further so that we have a full one foot because we want the sides here to be four foot. We want the center here to be five feet by four feet and another one foot by four foot section. That way we have a nice little step that goes underneath our soffit. So let's start digging that out. Got this leveled out. We got the front piece 
dug out more to accommodate the full paver. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna water this down because it's clay. I'm gonna water it down and then I'm actually going to tamp it again to make it one solid mass. Kind of let it dry for a little bit out in this heat and then we will come back and we will lay down the paper base, which we don't have to dig anymore. Lay out the paper base, level that, and then we can wet that down, tamp it, and we can actually start laying our pavers in place. And then we need to go get another 18 by 18 stone. And then we need to go get some paper sand to lock them in place. But we're on our way to actually building. Yay! All right, let's time lapse. but it is hot I got this nice shade it is still super hot outside um, but we're coming along we got the paper base put down uh, it's not perfect there are some voids here and there that I would like to fill but paper base isn't the most accurate thing in the world um, I'm really hoping that we can get the bulk of it leveled out today and then I can come back and fill some of those voids with the sand that goes in between. Um, the base is what's going to actually give it the structure. The sand is supposed to keep it from twisting and making the joints go bad. But hopefully we get this level enough, which it is from side to side and front to back. It's pretty level, um, even though it doesn't look like it to the eye. It is. But... We want to make sure those voids are filled so that the foundation isn't moving. That's what we don't want. We don't want our foundation to move. So we'll fill in those voids with the sand whenever we get that in. But right now I'm just going to lay it out. I'm going to water this down and then I'm going to start laying out the paver, pavers so that we can see where they sit, we can see which ones wiggle, we can come back and tap it with a rubber mallet. And then when we go get our other 18, wow, gust of wind. That feels great. Camera almost fell over. Okay. So once we get that figured out and we get everything tamped and we figure out where the voids are, when we go get the other 18 inch one, we can lock these down for sure, make sure they're all in place. And then we can actually start anchoring our four by fours and start building this shack. Um, I'm hoping that the 12 buys hold together when I anchor into them because I don't want them to just like fall apart and crack. If they do, worst case scenario, we have to drill holes and put actual footers in here and plumb and level those footers. Uh, but when we get that done, then we should be on our way to building the shack. So let's lay out some papers. Put my gloves on. Put my gloves on. And then if I want to, I can speed this up into the it, it. Okay, so we'll lay our first row out, then we'll lay our 18s, and then we will go from there. Actually, we're gonna water this first. That's what we're gonna do, William. We're gonna water it.
Yep, we're gonna have to go paver by paver. Ugh, I hate doing foundations. And yep, that whole back's got to come up a bit. Let's see how much. Oh, that would be why. Ah, there's a hump in the middle. Hopefully get rid of the hump in the middle. See, this is the tedious part. Now we gotta go paver by paver and level this out. All right, so let's lay the pavers back down. rock in the way. These three were pretty much level. foundations so you can take some out of the middle move it that way and get this up take some from there Let's see that all right here's where we're at guys so I put down the paper base and the base is great for you know making this solid, but I need it to be level. And the problem is, is paper base has these big old chunky rocks in them, which is fine, it's great. It's great for um, making sure that this is steady and stable. Um, all these rocks kind of lock into each other and they allow water to run under them and all that. But what they don't allow me to do is they don't give me the ability to really control what's going on, really make sure that I'm getting this as level as I want it to be. Because um, I want it to be really level. I want these, I want these, each one of these pavers should be dead flat from side to side. And the problem that I'm running into right now is I'm having a lot of, of humps in the middle. I'm having corners that are higher than the other. And the problem is, is I, I can move this base around, but if I move one of these big rocks, I've now created another void or I'm creating a rock that these pavers are just sliding around on. So what I need to do is I need to go get either paver sand or poly sand and I need to lay a layer of that poly sand down. And then I can use that sand to fill in the voids where this base is to go underneath each one of these stones. And then I can go stone by stone and level these stones out so that, you know, we're actually doing what we're supposed to be doing. We got a lot done today. 
I mean, we laid down the base, we dug out the thing, we leveled it almost, and then tomorrow we're just going to have to spend the day actually putting the sand down. So we'll have to leave the house at like 10.30, pick stuff up, come back out here, and then we're going to start leveling each one of these paver by paver. And hopefully we'll get this foundation done. And then by next week, we can actually start anchoring and building the shack. That's my hope. <sighs> Welcome to the world of making. Time isn't always your friend, and things don't go the way you think they should. Uh, well, that didn't go to plan. Never does. But hopefully, in the next video, you guys will see me get the right paved stones. You'll see me get the paver sand to level them out. And you'll see me finish up that foundation so we can actually anchor our 4x4s and start building the grill shack. But until then, like, comment, and subscribe. Get out there, start a project, get frustrated, figure it out, and I'll see you guys next time.